Let's learn how to make our Tito's Handmade Vodka signature cocktail of the evening, the Rosemary Grapefruit Mule. All right, so you're gonna start with your copper mug. Um, the metal copper mug is perfect to use because it will keep your beverage nice and cold. Um, then we'll go ahead and grab our Tito's Handmade Vodka. All right, let's pour one and a quarter ounce of Tito's Handmade Vodka. directly into your copper mug. Then let's do our grapefruit juice. I already squeezed mine, but y'all go ahead and squeeze if you need to. And we're gonna do half an ounce of the grapefruit juice. All right, once you've got the grapefruit juice in, we're gonna go ahead and add the lime juice. We're gonna do a quarter ounce of the lime juice. All right, once we've got the lime juice in, we're gonna go with our rosemary syrup now. We're gonna do a quarter of an ounce of the rosemary syrup, so same as the lime juice. All right. And now we're going to top it with ginger beer. Toss some ice in this. Give it a good swizzle. Then you will add a good rosemary sprig. Give it a slap to get the aroma going. And last, you're gonna add your grapefruit slice. A good little garnish there. Add a straw. And cheers. Here's to a great zoo rendezvous. Special thanks to our friends with Magic City Performing Arts who are here to show us how to cut a roaring 20s rug. 
Get ready to learn the Charleston. Hi, I'm Emily Tincher. And I'm Nicholas Backer. And we are guest artists with Magic City Performing Arts as well. We are here at the beautiful studios at Forma of Montessori Formations Dance Company Rehearsal. But before we do, we wanted to teach you the quintessential 20s dance style, the Charleston. Okay, to start, we are going to step with our left foot forward. We're going to kick that right foot forward, placing your heel on the floor, swinging those arms over to the right. We're going to step back with that right foot as you swing your arms to the left, and then take that left foot back as you swing your hands back over to the right. Step forward once again, sweep those arms over to the left, and then you repeat. Forward, step back, and back, step front, and forward, step back, back, step front. If you really want to get fancy, you can add some knees. So you go in, and in, and in, and in. But that's a little messy, right? So if you want to just stick with the basic Charleston and step forward, kick, step back, and back, and forward. We hope you enjoy. Have fun.
Tonight we're going to celebrate the 2021 Zoo Rendezvous. My name is Alex Morton. I'm the Birmingham Market President for Iberia Bank. We're a division of First Horizon now and I'm so excited to be part of the organization that believes like the zoo does to give back to the community and make it a better place. Through the years we've supported the zoo since 2010 and boy what a run it's been. All the new amenities, all the new animals we will support, all the kids that's been able to come here to the zoo to celebrate and learn about nature. At First Horizon, we believe in giving back to the community. And just in 2020, we already gave back $22 million back in the communities that we all live and work in. We're a proud supporter of the zoo and we really want everybody to have a great night tonight. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kay Ivey, Governor of the great state of Alabama. I'm happy to send my support to one of Alabama's treasured attractions, the Birmingham Zoo. Our state is one of the most biodiverse in the nation, and the Birmingham Zoo's continued work to inspire passion to conserve the natural world is something we are all proud of. Keep up the good work. Thank you all for supporting your Birmingham Zoo. I'm Randall Woodfin and I serve as Mayor of the City of Birmingham. And it is truly my pleasure to welcome you to the Birmingham Zoo's second annual Zoo Rendezvous, Roaring Twenties virtual event. You know, thank you so much for tuning in and joining us for a wild night, celebrating the zoo and its impact, inspiring passion to conserve the natural world. The zoo is a unique asset that helps make the Magic City a vibrant place to live. Rich in history, the Birmingham Zoo brings our community together for all to enjoy learning about wildlife and wild places. The zoo's dedicated staff continues to provide the best care to each and every animal that lives here. The Birmingham Zoo continues to expand its outreach and partnerships with other zoos, government entities, and wildlife rescue organizations in the U.S and internationally to advance conservation efforts to help all of our animals. 
I'd like to personally thank our zoo president and CEO, Chris Fefflecorn, and our board chair, Nancy Gerdeke, for their incredible leadership. And to everyone, to everyone tuning in tonight, thank you in advance for bidding in the fabulous auction and for your generosity and support, which is very, very critical. So I want to send you strength and love and all the strength and love to Birmingham. I can't wait to see you at the zoo. Thank you. Hello, I'm Nancy Gertie, this year's board chair, and I'm with my two favorite people in the whole wide world, Abel and Alex, at our favorite place in the whole wide world, the zoo. Please support our zoo. Hey everybody, it's Jesse here at your Birmingham Zoo. Welcome to your 2021 Zoo Rendezvous Roaring 20 style. We're gonna have some serious fun tonight, so let's kick it over to your hosts with the most. Welcome everyone to our 2021 family-friendly, fun and fact-filled Roaring Twenties festivities. The Carroll family is proud to be honorary chairs for this year's Zoo Rendezvous. Joining me is my husband Phil and my son Phil, along with Zoo's president and CEO, Chris Pfefferkorn. And Karen, because we all know birds of a feather flock together, I'm thrilled to introduce friends who love your zoo as much as we do. This year's co-chairs, Alexia Borden, Melanie Hennessy, and Jenny McInerney. Welcome everyone, you're in for a real treat tonight. If you love animals and your zoo, and we know you do, you're going to love what's in store tonight. With 2020 behind us, we've had a roaring good 2021 so far, but tonight's event is going to take us to new heights. We are counting on you to help us reach our goal of $450,000. Thanks to our generous corporate partners, including our presenting partner, First Horizon Foundation, we're well on our way to reaching our $450,000 goal. And those elephant, orangutan, and given partners really stepped up this year. They've given the lion's share to make sure we're well on our way to topping our $450,000 goal. So this is where you come in. We're counting on our fellow Birmingham Zoo lovers to donate and to bid on fabulous auction items now through this Saturday at 8 p.m. It's easy. Just text the numbers on your screen to donate and to bid. And I'll tell you what, to help encourage giving, our family will kick in the next $100,000 as a matching gift challenge. This means that up to $100,000 of every donation you make will be matched dollar for dollar. $100,000? The Carroll family is the bee's knees. It makes me want to do the Charleston. So here we go. Get ready to soar and roar with our animal care professionals and our factoid friend, Jesse. Welcome again to Zoo Rendezvous 2021. We're glad you're here. Did you know that lorikeets use a highly specialized tongue to drink nectar? Their genus name, Trichoglossus, literally means hairy tongue. Now you can try this with your beverage at home tonight, but we suggest a paper straw. The Birmingham Zoo is home to over 550 animals, like the 70 lorikeets who call the lorikeet aviary home. We have both carnivores and herbivores who all depend on the professionals at the Animal Nutrition Center for their diet and nutrition. And trust us, it's not an easy job. It costs the Birmingham Zoo $1,000 a day to feed their residents. Let's check in with Animal Nutrition Manager, Tarion Neal, to see how he and his team provide nutrition for these animals and to learn how you can help. Thank you. 
thank you for inviting us to the Animal Nutrition Center. Yeah, so it looks a lot different than the kitchens that we have at home. So can you tell us what your team does here? Uh, what we do here is we source all the items that are necessary to meet all our animals' nutritional needs every day. Uh, we perform quality inspection to make sure that everything's up to standard, and uh, we also prepare diets every day to make sure that our animals are eaten daily. So where does the food come from? Do you go to a local market, a grocery uh, store? No, so um, all of our food is sourced, or most of our food is sourced through companies that specialize in zoo nutrition or either at least have a division that is like specific to producing zoo nutrition. Um, of course, that's our meat, our fish, uh, of course, our hay and grain. The animals are going to eat that. Uh, but our produce actually comes from companies that provide produce to things like your local grocery stores and hospitals and schools. So a lot of local growers here in Alabama. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, awesome. Sir. Well, I love it. So can you tell our guests at home what they can do to ensure that our animals receive these healthy diets? Uh, I would say the best thing you all can do is just donate or bid using the information at the bottom of the screen. And we thank you. Thank you. Did you know that elephants tend to be right or left tusked? Just like we tend to favor one hand over the other, elephants use one of their tusks more than the other. Tusks are used for digging, rough housing, or sometimes just stashing food away from your herd mates. When writing checks this evening, we suggest using your dominant hand. Wow, that sounded great. I'm here at the African Elephant Habitat with Adam Brooks, Elephant Manager. Adam, do elephants actually make trumpeting sounds? They absolutely do. They make a wide range of noises, everything from trumpeting low growls and rumbles to even noises that we can't hear, and they use it to communicate with each other up to five miles away. The more you know. Can you show us some of the behaviors you and your team teach our animals so they can receive medical examinations or treatments? We sure can. So we're going to do a wide range of behaviors, everything from picking the elephant's feet up to turning them around to get a good look at their body, um, as well as they participate in voluntary blood draws, x-rays, a whole wide range of things that help take care of them. Um, it makes their medical care that much easier. And we do this by building a positive relationship using treats and rewards. Um, and this helps our keepers gain a trust with the animals and it makes everything easier for everybody. Thanks, Adam. We really appreciate you and the rest of our animal care professionals. But we need you, too. Help us hit our $450,000 goal to ensure our animals continue to receive loving, expert care every day. Text the numbers at the bottom of your screen to donate and bid on our online auction. On behalf of our handsome bachelor herd, thank you for showing them your love and support. <laughs> When someone says name a pollinator, most people think bees and butterflies. But did you know that moths, flies, and even bats are just as important for pollination? So if tonight you're enjoying chocolate, thank a moth. If wine is more your speed, respect the fly. And if you're enjoying a tequila margarita, then bats can get the credit. And that is no joke. Hello everyone, I'm Lindsay. Our mission at the Birmingham Zoo is to inspire passion to conserve the natural world. There's no better place to start that work than right here in our own backyard. When you purchase a ticket or a membership at your zoo, a portion goes into our conservation fund. Our conservation fund allows us to partner with local and state organizations to protect species like indigo snakes, gopher tortoises, black bears, and even bees. Speaking of bees, we're really keen on protecting our pollinators. Did you know your zoo has beehives? Let's buzz on over to Robin to learn more about our bee colony. Thanks for that sweet introduction, Lindsay. Hi, I'm Robin and I'm a relief animal care professional and bee lead. 
Our team has been busy as a bee taking care of our honeybee colonies for four years now. This year, we launched a pollinator program to advance our conservation efforts for our bee friends. We have two hives currently, Hive K and Hive Silver Lining. During the fall, we usually harvest about 50 pounds of honey from each hive, while still leaving the bees enough honey for winter. These bees are unlike any other animal here at the zoo. They stay busy keeping their home clean and orderly and will travel up to three miles to gather food and water. The beekeepers ensure that the bees stay healthy by monitoring their activity and periodically helping them with pest control. Our pollinator program will soon expand from our behind the scenes Monarch Way Station, which is a pollinator friendly garden with an abundance of milkweed to areas throughout the whole zoo. On your next trip to the zoo, look out for your pollinators and thank them for their hard work. In the United States, the two largest cats are the puma and the jaguar. It tends to be very difficult to spot a puma in the wild, but luckily, jaguars come that way. Hi, I'm Tara Manasco. Nine years ago, we created the PICA program, Passion into Conservation Action. Grants are awarded to zoo staff members who conduct innovative conservation projects here at home and around the world. Two amazing zoo friends and animal lovers, Larry and Phyllis Wojciechowski, have been a huge help in supporting these conservation grants. We couldn't do what we do without their help. Phyllis and I love our Birmingham Zoo and the amazing work that's being done here and around the globe. We support the zoo because we believe in its mission and are inspired by the passion of everyone who cares for these animals. Our own factoid Jesse is one of the recent PICA grant recipients. He's here to tell us about his recent conservation study in Florida, exploring wild coral reef restoration. As a PICA grant recipient, I was able to work on one of the largest coral reef restoration programs ever undertaken. The Florida Reef Track, which lies just off the coast of Florida, is the third largest barrier reef in the world. However, over the last 40 years, this reef has lost 97% of the once dominant reef building coral species. Designated as an AZA safe species, Atlantic Acropora corals are now spawning under human care as they would in the wild. I worked alongside biologists, aquarists from the Florida Aquarium, Moat Marine Lab and Aquarium, the Coral Restoration Foundation, and most recently, the Isla Mirada Conservation and Restoration Education Group to care for, reintroduce, and monitor the growth of these newly outplanted corals. I'm thankful for the opportunity for, to participate in the conservation effort and help raise guest awareness of this important reintroduction project. In 2016, I was awarded a PICA grant where I studied the effects of human disturbance on jaguars in southern Belize. Here at the Birmingham Zoo, guests will see our majestic jaguar, Khan. Our animal care professionals go above and beyond to ensure that Khan and all animals at your zoo receive expert, loving care. Part of this care involves daily enrichment, which helps keep our animals' minds sharp and encourages natural food-finding behaviors. We'd love for everyone tuning in tonight to help us meet our $450,000 goal. No donation is too big or too small. Thanks to friends like you, we can continue being a voice for these animals and help save species from extinction. Did you know that there are five species of rhinos in the world? Here at the zoo, we have Ceratotherium simon, or more commonly known as the white rhino. All species of rhinos tend to charge, but the most difficult part is keeping up with the card. Thanks, Jesse. I'm Alex, and I have the best job on the planet. I get to take care of these amazing animals. It's especially important because the rhino population is steadily decreasing due to habitat loss and poaching but they have a great home here. We love to treat them with carrots, apples, and belly rubs. Hi, I'm Anne. So how would you like to see the rhinos up close and even brush them? Well, come on, our education team hosts fantastic behind the scenes animal encounters. Visit our website to book your encounter. Oh, and don't forget to donate and bid. 
Next up, Roger will tell us all about the great virtual programs offered during this past year. When the zoo closed in March of 2020, our education team knew that we had to do something to assist the students, parents, and teachers from around the region who were suddenly out of school. We worked with our development team to secure a $10,000 grant from the Holly Family Foundation to purchase equipment to set up three virtual learning studios and secured additional funds to support scholarships for K-12 students in Title I schools from across the state to receive free STEM-based virtual programs on subjects ranging from zoo careers to physics at the zoo. These programs not only helped those teachers who were suddenly not able to bring their students to the zoo for their annual field trip, but also provided programming for students in the far reaches of the state who may not have been able to come to the zoo due to distance or financial difficulties. In the end, scholarships were offered to over 300 teachers and over 7,000 students in schools in 47 different counties across the state. Now let's kick it over to our honorary host of this Roaring Twenties Bash, our lion. Did you know that lions are the only social cat? They tend to spend their days resting in groups called prides. They would invite other cats over for cards, but nobody likes a cheetah. Hi there, my name is Scott and I'm the lead animal care professional here in our predator department. Each animal at the zoo receives special training catered toward their specific needs. Our African lions, Kwanzaa and Akili, participate in multiple training sessions each day as part of their mental and physical enrichment. One of the most important aspects of the training we do here with our animals at the zoo is that it allows each of our animals to participate in their own health care. Many of the behaviors that our animals know are what we call husbandry behaviors, and that basically means each behavior has a specific purpose that allows us to better care for each of their individual health needs. First of all, each training session allows us to get an up-close and personal look at each of our animals. We want to make sure every day and multiple times a day that our animals aren't showing any sign of illness or injury. If we do find something out of the ordinary, we will go ahead and alert our vets. They can come down. We can ask for those same behaviors so our vets can see exactly what we're seeing. So certain behaviors allow us to have our animals show us different parts of their body. In the case of our lions, we ask them to present their paws so we can get a nice look at their paw pads. We ask them to open up their mouths so we can check out their teeth and gums. Uh, and we also have what we call the lay behavior, which is where we ask our lions to present their hip up against the mesh. Uh, and this is how we train them to receive their annual vaccines voluntarily. So Kwanzaa, our male lion, he's currently 17 years old and weighs 375 pounds. Akili is our female. She is currently 16 years old and weighs about 275 pounds. Both of them receive several pounds of ground meat every single day and they receive bones uh, in addition to that several times a week. Uh, the bones we give them several times a week do help with their dental hygiene, kind of like you'd give your dogs at home a bone to chew on. Uh, we can't brush the lion's teeth, that's not a behavior they're trained for, so those bones help fill in for us there. As I mentioned earlier, each animal's training is catered to their specific needs and they're constantly learning new things. Just like we learn new things every single day, we want to make sure our animals are constantly learning as well to keep them mentally stimulated. Hi, I'm Tiffany. I wanted to say a great big thank you to those of you who are Zoo members. Your membership dollars matter. We're asking everyone to dig deep to hit our $450,000 goal to help in the feeding and care of our animals, including Kwanzaa and Akili. Thank you so much for your donation. We hope you have a roaring good time on your next visit to see our African lions. Did you know that the spines of porcupines are just modified hairs? These hard, hollow hairs are great for defending against predators, but they are a nightmare when styling for a party. Our predator team is really the cat's meow, or maybe the lion's roar. Did you know that a lion like Kwanzaa can be heard up to five miles away? Like Scott mentioned, all of our animals undergo regular training to keep their minds sharp and avoid added stress during their healthcare exams. I'm here with our Director of Animal Health, Dr. Stephanie McCain, to learn more about our animal care team. Thanks, Holly. By the way, we think you're the cat's pajamas. As you mentioned, our jobs here in the Animal Health Center would be a lot harder if our animals weren't trained to be comfortable when we're caring for them. We use trained voluntary behaviors to complete many routine animal exams, checking them from teeth to tail.
But not every procedure is simple. Back in January, African Cape porcupine Spud suffered a broken leg that required quick work from our team, along with veterinary specialists of Birmingham, one of our many community partners. Let's check in on Spud's progress and see how he's doing today. Do you know that North American river otters are known as an indicator species? When you find them in a river or a stream, it usually means it's a very healthy water system. If you see them swimming towards the riverbank, it usually means they're about to make a deposit. Hi, I worked at our zoo for over 18 years, but when I retired, I knew that I wasn't ready to stop playing my part to inspire passion to conserve the natural world. So now I'm a zoo volunteer. Meet my good friend, Colin, who can tell you just how important our volunteers are. Thanks, Karen. Your Birmingham Zoo is home to over 300 active volunteers who donate 30,000 hours every year. They work on everything from special events like Hoots and Howls and Glow Wild, to even helping care for our animals. They also provide education for students and guests in summer camps, pop-up education, and interpretation stations, and at our annual party for the planet. These are great times to catch up with our volunteers on the job and find out why they love volunteering at their Birmingham Zoo. Colin, it really inspires me to see the great ways our volunteers contribute to our zoo. I think I might even join Madeline over on the Elephant Crew with so many wonderful volunteers sharing passion. I'm sure other friends will want to join me as a volunteer. How can they sign up? Great question. If you would like to be a zoo volunteer, head on over to our website at www.birminghamzoo.com forward slash get involved and click on the volunteer tab. From there, you can access the volunteer application in addition to our zoo opportunity guide where you will learn all about the different available volunteer areas. If you are selected as a zoo volunteer, we will then reach out to you for next steps. Thanks, Colin. Wow, look what time it is. I think we have time for one more glass of champagne before the party's over, so we better get going. But I think I'll need a wardrobe change first. <laughs> To go. It was ultra cool. We can't get enough of those amazing animals. Well, that's how we roll, Karen, like a balled up armadillo, <laughs> having fun while living our mission of inspiring passion to conserve the natural world. But we're not finished yet. Remember, you can donate and bid on fabulous auction items through the Saturday night at 8 p.m. That's right, Alexia. Now is the time to donate or bid by texting one of the numbers on your screen. We're inching closer to our $450,000 goal, so do your part and make sure we get there. I can't believe it's already time to wrap this up and roar out of here. Where's the Packard to pick us up? Here's to you. Thanks for doing what you do for the Birmingham Zoo. Cheers. Good night. Good night.
to make our Tito's Handmade Vodka Signature Cocktail of the Evening, the Rosemary Grapefruit Mule. All right, so you're gonna start with your copper mug. Um, the metal copper mug is perfect to use because it will keep your beverage nice and cold. Um, then we'll go ahead and grab our Tito's Handmade Vodka. All right, let's pour one and a quarter ounce of Tito's Handmade Vodka. directly into your copper mug. Then let's do our grapefruit juice. I already squeezed mine, but y'all go ahead and squeeze if you need to. And we're gonna do half an ounce of the grapefruit juice. All right, once you've got the grapefruit juice in, we're gonna go ahead and add the lime juice. We're gonna do a quarter ounce of the lime juice. All right, once we've got the lime juice in, we're gonna go with our rosemary syrup now. We are gonna do a quarter of an ounce of the rosemary syrup, so same as the lime juice. All right, and now we're going to top it with ginger beer. Toss some ice in this. Give it a good swizzle. Then you will add a good rosemary sprig. Give it a slap to get the aroma going. And last, you're gonna add your grapefruit slice. A good little garnish there. Add a straw. And cheers. Here's to a great zoo rendezvous. thanks to our friends with Magic City Performing Arts who are here to show us how to cut a roaring 20s rug.
Get ready to learn the Charleston. Hi, I'm Emily Tincher. And I'm Nicholas Backer. And we are guest artists with the Magnus City Performing Arts School. We're here at the beautiful studios at Forma about to start a formation dance company rehearsal. But before we do, we wanted to teach you the quintessential 20s dance style, the Charleston. Okay, to start, we're going to step with our left foot forward. We're going to kick that right foot forward, placing your heel on the floor, swinging those arms over to the right. We're going to step back with that right foot as you swing your arms to the left, and then take that left foot back as you swing your hands back over to the right. Step forward once again, swing those arms over to the left, and then you repeat. Forward, step back, and back, step front, and forward, step back, back, step front. If you really want to get fancy, you can add some knees. So you go in and in and in and in. But that's a little messy, right? So if you want to just stick with the basic Charleston and step forward kick, step back and back and forward. We hope you enjoy. Have fun.
Thank you.